Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. Let me ask you a question. How do you know somebody truly loves you? Uh, how do you know somebody is a, a real friend, a true friend, or somebody isn't? And we could come up with this huge list, I'm sure, of different things that would show us or convince us this person is a, is a real friend, this person truly loves me, this is somebody who I want to spend time with. But wouldn't one of the things on the list be that they do what you say? That if you said, um, hey, could you help me with this homework or with this project, that they'd be there in a second. Or even if it wasn't a second, they'd say yes if they could. But if they said yes, they'd actually follow through and they'd actually do it. If they were going to go pick up lunch and they said, hey, what do you want from Chipotle? And you said, uh, I want a chicken burrito this way, that they wouldn't bring you back um, a beef bowl or a veggie bowl when you ask for something else. There's just, there's going to be this, these moments in life where you could begin to rely on somebody and trust somebody, but them actually doing what you say is also a sign of, of respect, right? It's a sign that they listen to you. It's a sign that they love you. I mean, that's a lot of times even at home. Uh, you know, me as a dad, me as a husband, when I ask my kids or my wife, would you do this? You know, it, when they don't do it at all, it, it hurts a little bit because I go, well, did you not hear me? Because the thing I asked you, it was sort of important to me. Maybe it wasn't important to you. I don't know. But, you know, it was sort of important to me. So why didn't you do it? What's really interesting is that at the end of the Sermon on the Mount, at the end of the longest teaching and message that Jesus gave in, in one sitting, he essentially points us to this, this dynamic Right, this reality that the way that you really know that somebody cares about you, that somebody loves you, the way that you really know you matter is they will do what you ask. They'll do what you say because there's that relationship there. There's that love there. There's that respect there. There's that honor there. And what Jesus actually says is the thing that will become the strongest foundation in our lives is doing what he says. A lot of times we think of, um, you know, our our faith or our belief being grounded or rooted on God's word. And it sort of is. But Jesus actually says it's not on his word. It's on doing his word. And so there's radically different than just saying on his word. Because you could know the Bible backwards and forwards. You could know what Jesus says to do in a certain situation. But if you don't do it, it honestly doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you know if you don't do it. So it's not just that, that God's words and God's teachings become the foundation for our lives. It's that doing them becomes the foundation for our lives. And when we do them, they become such a strong foundation that no matter what we face in life, we will always have this firm foundation to hold us firm and strong through the greatest and the worst challenges and storms of life. So let me read for you. This is in Matthew chapter 7, the very end of Jesus's teaching upon the mountainside, starting in verse 24 to the end of the chapter, which is verse 29. But I want to begin with the last verse. I'm sorry, the last two verses, which put this all in context of how the people heard it, of how the people understood what Jesus was teaching. It says this, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught like someone who had authority, not like the teachers of their law, which I think is so hilarious because they had teachers, right? They had religious leaders. They Those religious leaders taught him every single week. Yet those people couldn't even compare to Jesus's teaching. He actually taught with authority. He taught as though he knew what he was saying. He taught things that just made sense. That's where the authority came from, from God himself, from Jesus being the Messiah. But from the fact that when you really heard what Jesus said, it clicked. It made sense. The teachers of the law didn't have any of that right in that moment in their lives. So this is a radically different teaching in that Jesus taught it in a way that it sunk in. 
But the only thing that really begins to sink in, and we know it, is when we actually begin to do it. So let me read starting in verse 24. Jesus says this, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice... See, that's the other part that I'm trying to pull out, is it's not just hearing God's word. Honestly, that doesn't matter at all, unless you do them and you put them into practice. You would be like a wise person who built their house on rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, but it didn't fall because it had its foundation on that rock. And what's that foundation? It's hearing Jesus's words and putting them into practice. Both of those paired together. Verse 26 says this, but everybody who hears these words of mine, but doesn't put them into practice, is like a foolish person who built their house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, but it fell with a crash. So you have two examples of two people who both built homes. They built these homes. I'm sure they built them as nice as they could. I'm sure they made it their home. I'm sure they loved it. It was their place of refuge, of rest, of family, of gathering, of eating, right? It's their home. But one of those homes had a firm foundation and one didn't. And storms came. And in life, you've probably lived long enough that so many storms have come. And if you live much longer, many more will come. Now, what happens when those storms hit us, right? When the depression hits us, when broken relationships hit us, when the loss of job hits us, when a pandemic hits us, when sickness and disease hit us, when just feeling not loved or not accepted hit us, when not having a, a strong value of ourselves or self-worth or our self-identity being questioned, they hit us. Now, when those things hit us, do they knock us down or are we able to stand firm? Because in Jesus' example, both people in both illustrations heard the word of God. They heard Jesus' word. So it's not about hearing. The key is doing. And the only person that had a firm foundation was the person who actually did it. After all of this teaching and all of these wise words and all of these lessons that Jesus had given, he's basically saying it won't help you at all in life unless you begin to do them. So now what do you do? I would just encourage you to look at the word of God, read it and say, what do I need to do? And whatever pops in your mind, go do that thing. And look for things throughout your day, throughout your week, throughout your month, throughout your year, that as you are, are reading or hearing the word of God and Jesus' words, that you are looking for practical ways to implement them into your life, to do what Jesus said. If Jesus said, walk by faith, not by sight, how do you do that? If Jesus said, sell everything you have and give it to the poor, how do you do that? If Jesus says, forgive one another as I have forgiven you, how do you do that? All of those things and so many more are what we need to really have a firm foundation in our lives. If we only hear them, but we don't do them, we are as good as a house in the middle of a storm built on sand. That When the waters come, everything will get washed away. But if we begin to do them, if we begin to have the attitudes that Jesus talked about in Matthew 5, if we begin to love our neighbors as ourselves and love our enemies, then we begin to understand that that becomes the foundation for how we should truly live our lives. God bless.